everyone welcome and good evening from Lahore Pakistan I remember Pakistan has now cast its vote the decision will be known in a few hours counting is just underway uh, we are waiting to hear about the results in in a few hours as I said but I can tell you out on the streets in Lahore celebrations have already started and we'll talk all about that about just who's likely to win and what has really been the reason for this election in in the next uh, in the next 20 minutes i'm joined by my special guest tonight emir bilal sufi is the law minister of pakistan he's with the caretaker government that has overseen the uh, passage of these elections we're also joined by munaza hassan she is the pti uh, imran khan's party's women's wing chief and Memel Sarfraz, a, a popular face in India. She's a senior Pakistani journalist. Uh, and and I, I'd like to start with you, Mr. Sufi, and talk about the turnout a little bit, because we know only two things today. One, that the TTP, the Taliban, has made good on its threat in terms of violence, in terms of attacks on polling booths. But we also know that despite the threat, telling people not to come in and vote, we're expecting a good turnout. How do you see it? Well, that's exactly what our biggest concern was as an interim government. The law and order situation, the threats coming from TTP. And I think never before in the history of this country, we've had the political forces coming together for this election. And never before in the history of this country, the institutions of the state coming together to make this election happen. So I'm so happy and relieved right now that we have not seen a kind of incident that we were fearing the worst. And I must also compliment the people of Pakistan throughout the territories of Pakistan on all the provinces. People have come out. They have spoken. And I must also compliment, and I think it's a point to congratulate the political parties as well and their workers. They have come out and they have voted. And whatever the results are, we as an Akek Taker think we have crossed a huge finishing line, a huge hurdle has been crossed. And now we are on our way to a second finishing line, which is, will be the formation of the government in the next two, three weeks' time. All right. You know, this election is historic in more ways than one. Um, but one of the big things has been that some of the top leaders of the country have not actually been able to attend some of the last rallies or been able to vote. Uh, we have heard today from Imran Khan there from the hospital bed. He has been tweeting about the turnout and he said um, really that we demand from the ECP that voting time be extended. Of course, that demand was exceeded to in many places voting time extended because of the long lines of people who weren't able to vote. Uh, Munasa Hassan, uh, certainly the the, the PTI is hopeful that a high voter turnout will translate into good good, good amount of seats for, for the PTI. Why is that? Because uh, this the new uh, turnout uh, which we are expecting is going to be the PTI. People who have never voted before have decided to vote uh, now because they want a change and they want uh, a new leadership and uh, they didn't have a third option. PTI gave them a third option and that's I think the main reason why the silent voter has come out and uh, I think uh, by the end of the results we'll know exactly what uh, what is going to be the percentage of the uh, voter turnout. So we are very optimistic and I'm still very optimistic that PTI is giving them a tough time and uh, this, this is the first time actually that PTI is uh, 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 contesting and uh, contesting uh, with full force, with full optimism, and uh, we have worked really hard for, uh, for 17 years. That's right, but it's but it's a win-win situation for you either way. You start from zero. Whatever you make is going to be good for yeah, you. Yeah, whatever the results, uh, we we are very uh, very we will be very happy with that because uh, uh, I think we've done uh, uh, whatever we could, and we we'll still I mean we are in, and we'll keep on. Uh, uh, working hard and uh, um, I'm sure uh, I'm, I'm still optimistic the results are going we'll to be go your way. She's saying she's still optimistic. Mamal, I can tell you we've been to some of the polling booths and certainly we've seen that new voter come out today in Pakistan. Women, young people saying that it is Imran Khan they're voting for. But the large number of people talking about, in fact I said there were these three T's today. Everybody spoke about Tabdili, about change. Um, but then they were divided because some of them did speak about Taza Imran Khan uh, to get that third choice. But many spoke about Tajurba. 
We had, in fact, the older women that we spoke to and all the men we spoke to spoke about Nawaz Sharif. Do you see this election essentially going the PMLN's way or is it too early to say that? Uh, so as the polls, latest polls, um, polls have indicated that, you know, PMNN might back the most number of seats. Uh, but a latest survey by ha uh, Herald magazine showed that, you know, PTI and PMNN were neck, neck and neck in Punjab. But my, uh, and it's too early to say who will form the government. My sense is that, you know, it will be a hung parliament. No uh, party will get a clear majority. But my concern is that, you know, I mean, we should... This is a turning point in Pakistan's democratic history and we should have been celebrating it. Instead, uh, these elections have been dubbed as the bloodiest elections in Pakistan's history. They have taken place under the shadow of the Taliban. Three parties, ANP, PPP and MQM could not campaign properly due to terrorist threats, TTPs clear threats and they've uh, the attack, uh, attacked their rallies, they've killed their leaders, uh, Yusuf Raza Gilani's uh, son was kidnapped in broad daylight and you know other kidnappings have taken place and I mean people were afraid to come out and vote in uh, especially in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa but still I give the supporters of ANP 110 marks for you know braving the situation and coming out despite the threats ppp supporters coming out despite the threats and voting uh, we've heard uh, uh, different reports of uh, rigging in uh, karachi no. about the mqm so uh, but it was before this election itself that this election yes, but this was pre-poll rigging all right ever bilal sufi how do you answer that because the fact is as mammal says it's not just about what's happened on election day in the run-up to election day three parties were targeted three parties were singled out by the taliban the government was not able to give them any protection, including the former Prime Minister's uh, son. Legally, can't this election even be challenged given that, that at least one third, if not more, of the voting population was denied of a chance to see their well, leadership? Similar concerns were being heard in Senate. Uh, I was in Senate sessions and uh, these were the kind of concerns. I think the choices were very limited. Either we just go and don't go into elections or we actually go into the elections. Uh, look, Pakistan in, is in a very, very difficult situation. We are, I mean, a non-state actor is waging war on the state. He's withdrawn his loyalty from Article 5. He's, raging, uh, he's, he's raised un unlawful private armies. That's right. Your information so, minister called him, uh, called the TTP the, the opposition of today. That all the politicians are on one yeah, side and they are the The hardening factor remains that the coming together of the political forces to go for the elections has actually alienated a non-state actor. That's how the way we look at it. And I think